Hello. Today we'll be discussing the evaluation of uh, gross pathology of lung cancer. Uh, my name is Dr. Alan Borzak. I'm a pulmonary pathologist here at Weill Cornell Medical Center. And this is Esther Chang, and I'm a third year pathology resident, and I'll be here assisting Dr. Borzak. Well, the gross evaluation of lung specimens is not the most common specimen in the gross lab. It does represent an important specimen type because of the severity of lung cancer and the importance of the gross evaluation for the purposes of staging. The first part of this is really pre-work. We need to make sure that the specimen is uh, correctly labeled and came from a particular patient. Mm -hmm. uh, this was already done prior to us uh, taking the specimen out, but we do need to make sure of specimen identification. Mm -hmm. At that point, we need to check the medical record. We need to check the medical record for a variety of reasons. What are the sorts of things that we check today on this specimen? Well, we like to know how many nodules are there, what's the size, uh, where's the location specifically, and of course, like which lobe and which segment, if anything, um, depending what sort of specimen it is. Now, we ascertained that this was a lobectomy specimen. However, we do get other specimen mm -hmm. types in the laboratory in the resection of lung cancer. One of those is a smaller but wedge resection. Mm -hmm. uh, in a wedge resection, how would those uh, details that you looked up help you? Well, for one thing, if we can find the mass, and then we can correlate the size of the gross mass size with what we find on CT or ultrasound or any sort of radiological findings. And then um, from there, we can also measure from the mass to the actual margin itself in which we would ink. Now, if the radiology on the particular uh, patient uh, showed something that said on the order of a solid lesion, how would that affect your thinking? Well, solid lesions can mean a um, multitude of things, but one of the most important is probably cancer, of course, and then also granulomatous disease. But if it's semi-solid, you also think of um, cancer as well. And um, of course, ground glass lesions can be another multitude of entities. Now, how will that affect your approach to the specimen? Well, if it's a solid nodule, I can actually, I can suspect that I can actually palpate the lesion. And from there, I can do a gross measurement of like the largest length. So the importance of understanding the attenuation and size of the lesion assists the pathologist in understanding what they're looking for. They're looking for a lesion of a particular size in a particular location. And depending on the attenuation on CT of the lesion, affects our ability to palpate or localize the lesion prior to t even touching the specimen. And, and this is important because it prepares us for what we're going to encounter when we begin to interrogate the specimen directly through palpation and then ultimately uh, by cutting into it. And for example, if we had uh, found out that this was in fact a pneumonectomy specimen, how would that have impacted things? Well, pneumonectomy specimen, well, it would entail, I would think, completely different history. And maybe the tumor was just proximal and um, that was the only like surgery that was available to them or a lymph node that was actually positive. So um, the, I would think that the history is quite vastly different from what we have here. And what, as we begin to think about actually looking at, at, at this particular specimen, um, was there one nodule or were there multiple nodules and why would that matter? It was a single nodule and it's very important to actually realize um, if there are multiple because it could be multiple primaries or it can actually be an intrapulmonary metastasis which will change the staging. So in fact all of these points are the reason for the pre-work. We need to be able to reliably identify the lesion. We need to be able to understand where it is relative to the margins on the specimen. We need to understand why the procedure was done in this way. For example, a pneumonectomy may have implied a different localization to the tumor. And once we've done these elements of pre-work, we're now able to interrogate the specimen directly and really understand what we're looking for. Was there a biopsy done beforehand? And do we yes. know that this was in fact cancer? Yes. There was a previous needle core biopsy at an outside institution, and um, it was biopsy proven adenocarcinoma. So now that we are aware that this is a, a left lower lobe, that the diagnosis was cancer, 
radiologically, it turns out to be a solid spiculated lesion um, of uh, several centimeters in size, so we expect it to be palpable. Um, we can now move on to the gross evaluation of the specimen. So Esther, what would you like to do next? Well, first I would like to actually get a nice size of the lobectomy specimen. And so, in addition to the size, do we generally weigh lung specimens? We do, but we usually weigh them prior to actually uh, fixing it in formalin because it'll change the weight. So for this exercise today, we fix the specimen largely because of uh, the ease with which we would be able to then do this presentation without uh, face mask. Um, but nevertheless, normally we do this uh, in the fresh state. So what would you like to look at next? Well, next I would also like to examine the entire pleural surface. And you can see over here, there is a pucker. And so what is, the, what is that meaning of the pucker? What does that mean to you? For me, it means that there's definitely a mass that's underneath, as, and it's actually close to the pleura because it's actually pulling on the fibers. And so why are we really interested in that area? It also changes the tumor staging if it involves the pleura. And so as you're holding the specimen, can you feel the edges of the tumor mass? I can. You can. So you, you have a, an, an estimate right now of in which direction is the largest dimension? Yes, I do. Okay. That so that'll impact our ability to measure the tumor. We need to know in this case, if it's an irregularly sized tumor, that we can measure the largest dimension because tumor size is the number one important parameter that we need to determine during the gross evaluation. What other elements do you need to look for at this point? Also, I would like to look at the bronchovascular margin, which is over here. And is, does it f seem far from the tumor? Mm, I think it's actually kind of hard to tell. Clinically, on the radiology, did you find that it was an endobronchial or central lesion? No, it wasn't. It was peripheral. So is your expectation that it will be near the bronchial margin? No. No. So with that in mind, um, we can now begin to address the margin, which is a, a very important part of the evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in point of fact, um, the one other thing that we need to do is to, again, ask the question of whether there were other nodules. Do you feel any other nodules in the specimen? I do not. And externally, are there any other uh, features on the pleural surface? Is there discoloration, thickening, or blebs or bulla? No, not besides this pucker. So what would you like to do next? Well, I would first like to measure and ink the pleural pucker. Okay, why don't you proceed and do that? And now that you've measured the pleural pucker, you're mm -hmm. going to ink the surface of the pleural pucker in order to identify this area so that we can see it in the histologic sections as the tumor surface. Yes. And what we normally do is that we use green ink to ink the pucker. And then for the bronchovascular margin, or if there were a parenchymal margin, we would ink that black. And the purpose of the two colors is so that we can distinguish this later when we look at histologic sections, so that we know that the black ink and what it represents, and the green ink and what it represents, it's important to have these conventions and that they get dictated into the gross description of the specimen. Okay, good. And so now that you've inked this surface, what would be the next thing you'd want to ink? Well, I'm going to flip it over, and because the bronchovascular margin is right here, I normally will ink the top layer black without removing any of the staples at this okay. point. So why don't you go ahead and ink the margin black. While Esther is inking the margin, we should talk a little bit about why margins are important in these specimens. Uh, lung specimens have the, are the result of various surgical procedures. In wedge resections, there's an intent to remove the lesion without much peripheral lung tissue around it. Uh, those are close margins. In that circumstance, we like to see tumor to the true margin, in which case we remove staples. In the case of a lobectomy specimen, the stapled margin here we've already ascertained will be far from the tumor. And so in this circumstance, we can ink the margin and then we're going to cut the staples off the specimen because, in fact, we cannot histologically section the staples and therefore they need to be removed prior to histologic sampling. So now that the margin has been inked, 
uh, why don't you proceed and, and remove the staple line because we know that the tumor is not near it. So now that the staple line has been removed, what would you like to do next? Well, now what I would like to do is actually measure the bronchovascular margin. Um, this, by removing the staples, I can actually clearly see where the bronchus is, where the artery and the vein is. So I think this will provide a better like measurement. So you're gonna measure the diameter of those structures, yes. and then you're going to take sections from them. Yes. And you're going to essentially submit those as the bronchovascular margin. Yes, I will. And why don't you go ahead and do that then? Okay. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shave the vessels off. But actually, let me make a quick measurement, sorry. And what should you do next? From here, what I can do is that we can start sectioning it perpendicular to the staple line. So it was going this way. So what we can do is just go section it like that. And you're going to try to expose the tumor in doing that? Yes. And before you cut into the tumor, did you want to look for lymph nodes at the, at the bronchial margin? Yes, I would. So why don't we go ahead with that? And these are the two important staging pieces. We've looked at margin, that's very important for the surgeon. Now we need to discuss staging. We talked about the size of the tumor, so that's very important in planning your cuts. But it will be easier to uh, sample the lymph nodes before cutting into the specimen. So an examination of the bronchovascular mar margin is the best place to look for the lymph nodes because that's where they will be in a lobectomy. Uh, and these uh, will be designated as level 12. Um, lymph nodes because they're coming with a lobectomy rather than something more proximal. So there are a variable number of nodes in this location. Uh, one to two nodes may be in, uh, the, the total dissection. We may expose some more after we cut into the specimen. Um, you're going to try to take the lymph node intact and, yes. and it's okay if you get some lung parenchyma around it and it's okay if you get some airway around it. It's all fine as long as we can see the entire lymph node. Okay, so now we've identified lymph nodes and we're going to move to uh, the tumor mass itself uh, with the uh, plane of section like you described to expose the longest extent of the tumor so we can get an accurate measurement. Yes. So why don't you go ahead and do that with your uh, very sharp blade. Sounds good. Um, personal preference, I'm going to just lay down some towels. So a lot of this has to do with having enough traction on the specimen so that it doesn't move during the cutting. As I mentioned, the blade is quite sharp. And so the goal is to get sections through the tumor uh, and also to make the sections relatively thin so that they would be suitable for uh, submission for histology. Are you through the tumor mass at this point? I am. Are you going to make some serial cuts just to complete the cuts? These don't have to be as, as thin as the others, mainly because we're, we're not really going to be submitting quite as much of the remainder of the specimen as we are at the area with the tumor. The purpose of cutting the rest of the specimen is to look to see if there are additional nodules and to also to better palpate the specimen on the thinner slices. Mm -hmm. So why don't we have a look at the tumor? So tell me what you see. So it's a fairly well circumscribed white firm mass and you can see it going reaching out into the pleura. And so as you look at it, what are the things that you're thinking about the color, the texture and the relationship to the pleura? And also the location in the peripherally located, I would think of adenocarcinoma. In addition, um, the color of, of the cut surface 
uh, is a bit variegated. At the very periphery, it's uh, tan to white, but at the center, it's a little grayer and browner, and, and also it's a little bit depressed. Mm -hmm. uh, that depressed center is very typical of adenocarcinomas in that the fibrosis that occurs in the center of the tumor causes retraction, mm -hmm. and that retraction causes that depression. That appearance we often call umbilicated, and the umbilicated appearance is quite characteristic of adenocarcinomas, mm -hmm. although certainly not entirely specific for it. Mm. In terms of feeling it, does it feel firm? Does it feel like lung parenchyma? No, definitely not. And, and this goes along with the clinical observation on CT scan that, in fact, this was a solid no attenuation nodule on CT scan. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the surprises at first in looking at it is that it doesn't look as spiculated or irregular as it did on the CT scan, right. but perhaps a component of that had to do with the pleural pucker, mm -hmm. and perhaps some of it is a little bit irregular as you look uh, deeper towards the bronchovascular bundle. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, um, where uh, you feel that this correlates well with the CT appearance of, this, of the tumor and that this is in fact the tumor mass that was found by CT scan. Yes, I think so. So what would you like to do next? So what I would like to do is assess the tumor um, closest to the bronchovascular margin. And from there, I would make my measurement and then um, I would also like to, of course, have a gross measurement of the tumor. Okay, so now the measurements that are important are the distance of the tumor to the bronchovascular margin, which we assessed was not close, right. and we, we've confirmed that assessment, and as well the entire longest dimension of the tumor, which is the most important for staging. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is, how, how do you want to deal with the pleural pucker? Well, for the pleural pucker, I believe we need to have a minimum of two sections two full sections so we can have proper assessment. Okay, and so why don't you go ahead and do those things to do those measurements and then we'll proceed. Okay, sounds good. You'd like to measure which dimension? There's this dimension. Is that the largest? No, it's not. It's not. So which dimension would you want to take? Um, well, I would actually like to put stack the mass together. And try and to measure it here. Exactly. And so what measurement do you get doing that? See, the other extent is here, so what measurement do you get? Four centimeters. Okay, four centimeters is right. So now that we have dimensions on the tumor, mm -hmm. what would you like to do next? So, um, I want to take my appropriate sections of the tumor. Uh, so I'd like to take tumor to the closest bronchovascular, and um, I'd like to have full face of the tumor itself, if possible, of course, and of course the two sections with the pleura. So we also additionally want another section of tumor to normal. So standard sections would be to, again, assess stage. So mm -hmm. I think those are all appropriate sections. Um, in this case, uh, the purpose of trying to get a full face is to see truly how much invasion there is in the tumor and to ass assess that properly. In this case, we probably think the tumor will be mostly invasive, but still as a standard, that would be the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, the sections to take, or tumor to margin, tumor to pleura in duplicate because we really need to document the pleural involvement, and uh, tumor to lung parenchyma mm -hmm. as the key sections of the tumor. Uh, are we going to submit this tumor in, in its entirety? Um, that also depends on the size and whether it's been treated or not. So if this has been previously treated and if it's reasonable, then we would submit all. However, if not, and it's way too large, then we can do a, a section per centimeter. And so in this case, there was no uh, clinical history of uh, treatment, and so there's no uh, requirement to submit the entire tumor. In the case of taking tumor to pleura times two, tumor to margin, and tumor to lung parenchyma times two, we heard that the tumor was four centimeters, and that would exceed a section per centimeter, which was what we talked about. We will also even additionally have a full face section. And so with that, why don't we proceed to take the sections? Sounds good. So now we're really seeing the full face of the tumor. Yes. And why don't you go ahead and take your sections. Okay. So I want the tumor closest to the bronchovascular margin. I'm just going to make a cut here. And so a few words about sectioning while Esther is doing that. Our goal is to not make the sections too large because they will be uh, difficult to fix in the tissue processing. And so some people use, say, a nickel. I think we tend to go a little bit bigger than a nickel. Uh, but certainly when we look at our histology cassette, 
The tissue should not be greater than three quarters of the cassette. Um, the other consideration is that the thickness of the slices uh, should not be too great. Uh, certainly if you're having difficulty closing a cassette, the tissue is definitely too thick. Probably two to three millimeter thickness is about right. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go a little bit thicker with certain tissues, but beyond that, it's, it, it becomes again difficult to fix. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've already sliced it thinly, so you can go ahead and continue. Sounds good. So I just removed the tumor to the bronchovascular margin. Um, I believe this section can go in its entirety. So it would also include the pleura, and it's practically a full face of the tumor, mm -hmm. and it goes from the tumor to normal as well. Okay. So uh, that is a slightly big section. It is. Um, we might need to trim that down yes, a little can. bit on the sides so we won't get the tumor to lung parenchyma from this section. Okay. Um, but again, we want to keep our histology technicians happy and mm -hmm. able to do their job. So with this section, I'm also going to have another pleura to tumor. And I'll have this section to also have tumor to normal. Okay, so. so again, when taking the sections of tumor to pleura, it's important to really get the complete base of the pucker. And you can see that in the section that Esther's cutting right now and that the base of the pucker is V-shaped. This will be the area of maximal retraction and is usually the area when there is invasion that we'll find the pleural invasion. So that's a very important section. And so now from the same slice, you're going to show a relationship of tumor to normal. And because you were so efficient with that one section, we're just at the verge of not having a centimeter, a section per centimeter. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take one more from somewhere uh, that good. has tumor in it. Okay. And you could do that from the remainder of the specimen just to get a different sample from a different area. Okay. So part of the reason we like to see the interface between the tumor and the normal is that there are certain patterns of adenocarcinoma that are different in different parts of the tumor. And so we're trying to get areas that uh, would uh, sample the tumor completely um, so that we can see all the different patterns of adenocarcinoma, especially if they're within it, would be a pattern histologically that would predict either a more favorable or a poorer prognosis. Mm -hmm. And so we need to classify the adenocarcinoma in addition to measure it. And so that's the purpose of taking several sections. Mm -hmm. So now we've addressed the tumor, and so we've taken our sections and shown the relationship uh, for staging, measurement, mm -hmm. and pleura. And we also have our sections for heterogeneity so that yes. we can assess the different histologic types. Mm -hmm. So what do we want to do next? Well, I'd like to inspect the uninvolved lung and make sure that there aren't additional nodules. And so again, the purpose of doing this, first of all, there may be nodules or, or lesions present that were simply not detected by imaging. And so it would be important for us to identify them. Uh, secondarily, uh, there may be aspects of lung pathology that are not related to the tumor that might be related to a history of smoking or to what we call interstitial lung disease, that is lung fibrosis. So we want to make sure that the lung parenchyma that's not involved by the tumor has been properly inspected for additional nodules and also for additional pathology. In that case, we would take a sample from that area to try to demonstrate that pathology. So, so far, are you finding anything, Esther? No, I'm not. How would you describe the lung parenchyma as you are holding it in your hand and palpating it? Well, it has this um, almost like a spongy feel to it. So. Um, and would you say that that's a normal feel for lung? That is a normal feel. It certainly isn't firm, so I'm not thinking that there's any sort of consolidation. So what I'm doing right now is that I'm looking for nodules, but not only am I looking for nodules, I'm feeling it. And I would say that the palpation is probably more important than even the visual inspection. And so it's really critical that uh, the technique that Esther is showing of holding the slice in her hand and rolling the slice in between her thumb and forefinger be done because that's how we can feel a, a little uh, nodule uh, like a, a small ball within the specimen which would uh, direct ourselves to taking a sample from that area. And so continue to inspect the rest of the specimen. I mean, other features as you're holding the specimen up um, in the slices is that uh, when we look at the cut surface, um, why don't you hold that up and why don't you tilt it a little bit this way? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Actually, you can it's see the light. You can you see the air spaces right now? Are they visible? 
No, not in that area. Not particularly, right? Mm -hmm. So if at an arm's length the air spaces are visible, that's usually a sign of emphysema or some abnormality, but if it really is stretching and straining to see the alveolar spaces at arm's length, mm -hmm. they're probably relatively normal. So if they feel normal and they look normal, then you're, you can move on. So uh, we're getting the impression, I think, from multiple slices that this is an area of hemorrhage. We've sampled it twice. Yes. I think that's enough for this particular area. I think we can move on. Oh, Dr. Boris, I do have a question. So in regards to submitting a normal lung parenchyma for this particular specimen, mm -hmm. I understand that it's supposed to be distant from the tumor. However, because we additionally have like other findings, so where exactly is the best place to sample? We should take a minimum of two normal sections mm -hmm. uh, in our evaluation. Um, it is difficult here because there is that other area of abnormality, which right. could be uh, hemorrhage rather than something uh, parenchymal lung disease. Mm -hmm. We didn't really find the lesion of fibrosis or emphysema to particularly sample. What I would do is I would pick areas of two areas of lung that were not near the two areas of hemorrhage, but perhaps uh, closer to the tumor, but not near the tumor in these mm -hmm. slices, uh, just to see a couple of different areas of lung. Okay. And at the same time, to look for lymph nodes just to make sure we haven't missed any. So let me just hand you this slice that we had looked at before. Okay. And because as we were talking, I did notice that there was just a tiny, maybe two, three millimeter lymph node mm -hmm. right here near the airway. So we're going to take that one. Okay. Okay. So why don't you take the slice from me and why don't you take that section? Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to take a section from here. It sounds good. And okay. perhaps we could trim this down we'll afterwards. trim it down before we submit. I think that's a good idea. Again, it just makes it easier for the tissue to fix. Um, there are other reasons. Uh, it, it will help histology to cut the sections, but also as we think about immunohistochemistry uh, and other ancillary tests that we may need to do, uniform fixation of the specimen is an important parameter for the success of those tests, uh, as it probably is for the success of molecular tests. So we have to be thoughtful about not uh, underfixing or overfixing the specimen. With that, I think we've, we've searched for lymph nodes. We did find an additional small lymph node or two. Um, we have sampled normal lung parenchyma, and, and we found another area which uh, we're concerned about uh, enough to look at it microscopically. And so with that, why don't we review the sections we've taken uh, from this uh, part of it, which would be the, the sectioning part of the gross examination. So for the first submission, we have the bronchovascular margin in which we shave off the margin, and we put the margin of interest face down into the cassette. The next that we submit are all our lymph nodes that we find. And the section after is the tumor to the bronchovascular margin, the closest two. Then we have two sections of full face of the tumor, as well as its involvement to the pleura. And over here, we have two additional sections in which it has the tumor to um, the uninvolved normal lung. And of course, we found additional findings of possible hemorrhage, so we took two additional sections over here, and then we have two additional sections of uninvolved lung parenchyma that's distant from the tumor, as well as the hemorrhage, of course. And then we found another area of suspected hemorrhage, so we've also made an additional submission. And so, uh, just to go back to lymph nodes for a moment, mm -hmm. um, did you bisect any of the lymph nodes? I did not. And do you estimate a number that you found? Yes, we have three. And so both those things need to be in the gross description so that yes. we can reconstruct an accurate count mm -hmm. of lymph nodes. So, you, we've seen today uh, the three steps in the evaluation of a gross lung specimen, in this case a lobectomy. In the first section, which we'll call pre-work, it was critical for us to understand the location and attenuation of the lesion, the size of the lesion, and the nature of the resection and why it was performed. In the second portion, we were able to take the information that we got from the pre-work to assess the specimen properly, to find the lesion. In this case, it had a pucker, so it was fairly easy to find. The attenuation was solid, and so we were able to palpate the lesion and estimate its measurement through external examination. We then were able to assess the margins of the specimen and that there was one margin which was bronchovascular and that the specimen was a lobectomy. 
We were able to externally look at the pleura to see other lesions such as fibrosis or any hemorrhage or other surface lesions. With that visual inspection, we moved on to sectioning. The sectioning required us to ink the specimen, to ink the area over the pleura, to ink the bronchovascular margin, and then to assess the margin, we examined it with the staple line removed for the diameter of the airway and vessel, as well as any nodes that are typically present in that area. We then proceeded to section the tumor, attempting to expose its full face so that we could see its relationship to other structures, and to also then serially section the normal lung to look for other lesions as well as the adjacent lung parenchyma. And then we were able to take our sections with specific focus to issues that are related to tumor staging. Size, which is absolutely critical to get to within the uh, measurement uh, of a millimeter length, meaning that 3.1 is different than 3.0, and so we do need to be careful about those measurements. The relationship to the pleura, to take two sections so that we can accurately stage the patient for invasion of the pleura, tumor to normal parenchyma, and also to get a section of the full face. Then with those features in mind, we'd be able to accurately stage the patient for the tumor size and pleura, and also its histologic diversity, which would be assessed by having multiple sections, either total submission in the case of a small tumor, say under two centimeters, or in this, in this case, a sample that was one section per centimeter. We then proceeded to look at the normal lung to find other nodules, again critical for staging, and to look at non-neoplastic lung parenchyma. We then made sure that these were accurately labeled in submission to histology, and that the sections themselves were of good quality so that we would get good fixation. At that point, we're able to complete the dictation and to finish the gross evaluation of uh, this uh, lung cancer lobectomy. So with that, it's been a pleasure talking to you about this topic t today, but I will turn to Esther for a moment if she has any additional comments to make. Well, just a single one, Dr. Borzuk. Um, essentially, if you have any questions and if you're confused about how to gross a specimen and for some reason the grossing manual doesn't clearly define how to gross it, feel free to call an upper year resident as well as the attending who's on with you or any attending to review the specimen with you. I think that's a great point, and uh, we are a team and we work together well. And with that, I want to congratulate you on an excellent job, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you.